You guys ready to participate in another one of my goofy fantasies where I think somewhere deep down companies give a damn about us and want to treat us like humans? Yeah, I'm not ready to do one of those fantasies either. Either, And that's why today I'm calling for a trucker's union. Yet another video where I speak on things I have no idea about. Do we ever get tired of it? Do we ever get tired of it? But, hey, you know, that's the kind of fantasies I have. When you get to be my age and look this damn weird, these are the kind of uh, fantasies I participate instead of fun ones. I do this. I worry about truckers unions and nonsense like that. So that's what we're going to talk about today. A truckers union and why we need one. And maybe I'm wrong. I don't really know. I don't know if that solves any problems whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I know we would never unionize for the record. Once again, talking specifically about over the road trucking. You local guys, you guys are on your own. You fight for your own damn rights. Damn it, I'm already fighting on this front and I can only be spread so thin. But anyways, what was I saying? I just don't remember about a trucker's union. Oh yeah, I'm not naive enough to think that we could ever actually pull it off and get a trucker's union for over the road truckers. I obviously don't believe that. The minute any company, every company out of there got a whiff that we were trying to organize, we would all be out the door. Every trucking company that doesn't already have a trucking school would be opening up trucking schools. And all that money they could have just paid us to keep us happy, content little truck drivers, they would pour into advertising for their new trucking school to bring new people in that don't know that they're not being treated very well and uh, start the process all over again. And cool thing about it, once those new drivers got a couple years in and they said, man, we should organize, they're out the door too, and they already got the trucking school built in. Fantastic. I know we could never organize. I absolutely know that. They would replace us quick. Because the fact of the matter is, uh, in, in today's economy, trucking really doesn't pay bad, uh, especially compared to your, you know, standard typical jobs. It uh, actually pays pretty well, pretty well. You guys know I left trucking for a while. I uh, tried to go back into the IT field. I was making right around that $20 an hour range, you know, and you really needed to work a lot more than 40 hours to make a good living doing that. I don't know how people do it in these uh, office jobs, you know, with 18 to $24 an hour range type of stuff. Even $30 an hour would leave me scratching my head. I have a family to plan for. So the reality is we do make a decent amount of money. It's real easy to replace us. Uh, put somebody in three weeks of, of school and get them out in a truck and they're making, you know, two or three times what they're making in a normal job. Maybe not three times. That's probably a bit of an exaggeration, but two times? Easy. Easy. So, I know we can never unionize. I know we can never organize. It's... It, maybe. I mean, I don't see it as something that could happen. But... I have come up with my plan as your union representative, the future of all of us truckers, me, right here. Um, I left out a really funny joke and I forgot it. Should I put in the joke? Okay. These are the things I fantasize, remember? I was talking about that at my age, right? You know, trucker unions and stuff like that. But at least it's better than what the boomers still fantasize about, making life harder for their children and now their grandchildren in their dying days, figuring out how to make everything more difficult for everyone else for their own damn benefit. I'm just kidding a little bit, boomers. Calm down. I meant to say that earlier in the video so we could weed out anybody that would get angry really fast, but I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't do it. Anyways, um, so... No B-roll today. No B-roll today. The reason is, is because I haven't went anywhere. I am once again the victim of a load planner that just failed to plan. That's okay. The good news is I get to pick up at 11 o'clock tonight and drive all night. Isn't that fun? Isn't that a fucking fun thing to do? Hell yeah. Could you imagine if, say, one in every ten loads I just didn't deliver it? Just, I don't know where it went. It's just gone. I just didn't deliver. I just parked somewhere and said, hey, can I get my next load? And they go, did you ever deliver that one? And I'd be like, no. And they'd go, well, where is it? And I'd go, I don't know. I, I just failed to deliver it. I, that's all you need to know, right? They'd fire me. 
But hey, that load planner can sit there and fail to plan. That dispatcher can sit there and fail to dispatch and they'll just keep collecting their full paycheck, won't they? That's okay. That's okay, but don't worry, I did complain about my money. So that is why I'm sitting here thinking about goofy things like truckers unions for us over the road truckers. And my goal, my goal, guys, as your future union representative, wouldn't necessarily be to run these companies in the ground and just take everything we can because we still need jobs, right? But it, the main goal would to be to get rid of the inconsistencies in our pay, the absolutely wild swings that uh, over-the-road truck drivers have to deal with because as most everybody here knows, maybe you're new, maybe you're looking at trucking and you don't know much about it, we're paid mostly just by the mile. We're paid for how many miles we drive how many miles we're dispatched on, and there's nothing we can do about it. We can manage our clock as best we can, the most efficient way possible, and that's it. That's the extent of how much we can impact our mileage. We have absolutely zero control as over-the-road company truck drivers over how many miles we're going to get. We are at the mercy of someone deciding if they will or will not do their job. So my main goal would be to reduce those inconsistencies because, you know, there's nothing worse than like, say you have three good weeks, right? Hey, three weeks, we just ran our asses off. And then that fourth week, you just run into a wall. Nobody's doing anything. You're not making any money. And uh, now you're like, well, I saved up a little money from those three weeks, but it's not enough to cover, you know, this horrible week that I just had. So now you're spending the next three weeks trying to catch up for that one bad week. And then that fourth week again, slammed right back into another goddamn wall going, how the fuck do I do this? Right? So you always need to be making money out here. Well, being paid by the mile makes that as a very difficult thing to do sometimes. Case in point, I've been sitting here almost two full days. Don't worry, I asked for some money. We all know that layover and stuff like that does not pay what driving the truck pays, but it's not my damn fault, right? I had nothing to do with it. I asked the day before I delivered if I had a pre-plan because I hadn't seen one come through. They said, nope, not yet. That was it, that's all they said. Then the next morning when I delivered, I said, I'm ready for my next load. They said, I'm checking with the planners. You know what I did? Played video games all day. By the way, I know some of you got to see the little video I put out last night. It was just some quick uh, cyberpunk uh, stuff with a humorous title. I took it down because I'm not trying to screw up my algorithm here too bad, but I figured you, you late night guys might enjoy a little bit of a laugh. So I put it up, little 20 second video. This morning got up, took it down because I'm not trying to make the algorithm second guess what my channel's about. I just thought it was fun last night. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Anyways, to the point, to the point, what would I do if I were the leader of a trucker's union? And you guys are welcome to put in your input also in the comments. Um, keep in mind, I'm well aware that this probably doesn't work. So you going off on a rampage in the comments about what an idiot I am does absolutely nothing to help us have a conversation at all. So it all comes down to money, baby. That's what all this is about. It all comes down to money. Now, the reason I'm only gonna talk about money is because I'm not smart enough to understand what a good retirement plan is. Do we wanna bring back a pension? Do we want a 401k with a certain required match by the, the, uh, the, the, the union, I don't fucking know. I'm not that good with those kind of finances. So you guys can come up with all that in the comments about how you would handle our retirement. Um, as far as health benefits go, I don't know the answer to that either. So it all comes down to money for me, baby. All comes down to money. So here's what I think over the road trucking should be. This is gonna sound crazy. This is going to sound crazy. We should be paid for all of our time. All the time that we spend tending to this truck, being in this truck, and doing everything we need to do to keep this truck moving down the road because we are not, we are not paid for all of that. Now I've heard the arguments before. People have said, Josh, if you made trucking companies pay for everything, every bit of work you did, then uh, they wouldn't have enough money to stay in business. Good, fuck them. 
If you can't afford to pay your employees, you literally cannot afford to be in business. That's the way this shit should work. And if it did, if it actually doesn't work that way, then I am now hiring for 10 people to edit my videos and make social media posts and, and do all kinds of stuff to help me grow this YouTube channel. Can't afford to pay you though. This is a business, baby, not a charity, okay? This is a fucking business. What do you mean, pay you? Pay you, come on. I'm here to make me money, all right? And now you want your piece of the pie? You must be fucking crazy. <laughs> That's the point. You can't afford to be in business. If you can't afford to pay your employees, you cannot, simply cannot afford to be in business. So, when I talk about us being paid for all our, our time, here's the things that I mean pre-trip and post-trip. Oh, you want us out here walking around this truck all day? All, all day? They don't want us walking around the truck all day. <laughs> Nobody's asked us for that. Now I'm being unreasonable. Every day though, every day you want me to go walk around this truck, pre-trip it and post-trip it? Now obviously we need to. That's what keeps us making money, right? We need this truck running down the road. But hey, it's not my damn equipment. Pay me. Pay me to inspect this truck. Fueling. Yeah, while I'm on Fuel Island. You know how long it takes to get through Fuel Island sometimes? That's my time. That's my time. Actually, now that I say it out loud though, that makes the situation at Fuel Island worse. <laughs> I mean, we're all getting paid anyways if I have my way, right? But could you imagine all the shitheads that are already parking to go have lunch and go take a shower on Fuel Island? And they're like, hey, truck's on Fuel Island. I'm getting paid anyways. They're, they'd be in the casino gambling, in the strip club, throwing dollar bills around. Hey. I'm getting paid because I'm on Fuel Island anyway. So, because we have so many shithead truckers, that just makes that situation that much worse at Fuel Island. But, hey, fueling the truck, we should get paid for. When we log fueling on our little Qualcomm or whatever logging device we have, we should be paid for that. Absolutely, absolutely. The truck wash. Yeah, I do reefer right now, refrigerated, for those of you that don't know. For those of you that don't know, and a lot of times these trailers gotta be washed out because these jackasses will reject it. They're not jackasses, we're hauling food. We need a clean trailer to haul that food in. Now a lot of times you can get away with getting back there and getting your old leaf blower out and just blowing all the junk out and the trailer looks good as new. Every once in a while you gotta wash it. Either way, we should be paid for both of those, baby. That's me, that's me working, that's my labor. I'm back there cleaning that sucker out, or I'm waiting in line at the Blue Beacon. I'm in front of a Blue Beacon right now. You can't get out of this parking lot right now, because everybody's lined up to get into the Blue Beacon. Yeah, yeah, I should be getting paid for that. It's just the way it is. Truck maintenance, like it goes into the shop, right? Okay, truck's down, no fault of your own. You should be getting paid for that. Now, a lot of companies do have what they call breakdown pay. That's, uh, hey, after 24 hours, we'll pay you 100 bucks. Oh yeah? <laughs> Thanks for nothing, dickhead. Thanks for nothing. Um, no, I think I'll pass. I, I, I mean, I won't pass on the money. But anything like this that uh, shuts you down for the day, um, we're talking about like the truck broke down, you're down for the a day, two days, three days, whatever. Layover because load planner failed to plan, right? I think all of this should be paid out and not this stupid $100, $150 nonsense. Oh, you're required to be down for 24 hours before we, we, we pay you a hundred bucks because we really care about you, our truck drivers, so we're gonna make sure you get that hundred dollars. It should be paid out at a minimum 500 miles at whatever your current pay rate is per mile. Hey, you could probably run more than 500 miles that day. 550, 600, 650 if you're going at it, right? But hey, you know what? This ain't my fault. Someone else failed to do their job. And then maybe there'd be more accountability on these load planners and dispatchers too. When the company's like, we're just handing out 500 miles free to all these damn drivers that aren't driving nowhere. What in the actual fuck is going on? Somebody's going to want an answer to that when you start having to pay the drivers a good rate for sitting around. Oh shit, you might motivate some people in the office to start doing their fucking job that they're getting paid to do anyways. <laughs> they're getting paid to do it whether they do it or not. Well, oh well, oh well, right? Isn't it weird? Don't you think it's weird? What are these companies called again where we work? Hmm, trucking companies. Yeah, it's called a trucking company, which means it's involved in trucking, right? Who does the trucking? The, 
to motherfucking truckers do the motherfucking trucking? Who, who, who else do you think? Who do you think, right? But when something goes wrong at the office level in the trucking company, everybody else at the trucking company still collects their full paycheck except the one person, the truck driver. Does something seem fucked up here? Does something seem fucked up here? That seems wrong to me. Not sure I understand, damn it. Not sure I understand it. Detention. Detention pay. For those of you that don't know, guys, bear with me, all right? I know I say that a lot, but this channel starting to grow again. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you hanging out with me. Um, there's a lot of people here that are truckers. So, detention means when you pull into a shipper and receiver, you're backed into your dock. A company will start paying you a certain rate, a not very good rate, $15 an hour, $20 an hour, if you're lucky. For every hour that you sit there waiting to be loaded or unloaded, but they don't start paying you, pretty much industry standard is two hours. Two hours after your appointment time, if you're still sitting there, then they start paying you. That first two hours free. That first two hours, absolutely free. You get nothing for it. And they start paying you starting at the beginning of that third hour. Worst part about it, when you go and ask these companies if you can get your detention pay, a lot of times they'll ignore you. Be like, eh, maybe he'll forget about it. Maybe he'll forget about it. But detention pay should start immediately as long as you're there at the beginning of your appointment time. Does your time not mean anything to these people, right? And hey, maybe companies should be charging that back to shippers and receivers. All of them though, all of them would have to participate. Get the shit unloaded. Hire people to unload the shit and get it off the fucking trailer. You're holding up our equipment. Who do you think you are? Every other business that has to do with equipment charges for the whole time that that equipment is being used. Trucking is the only one that says, yeah, lock our equipment in there so it can't leave. Take your sweet ass time and do it for free. We don't give a fuck. If you went, went and rented a crane for some reason, you needed a crane. Do you think you get the first two hours that crane rental for free? Fuck no, you don't. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So... And the final point I want to make, because I had another point, but I already covered it. Uh, layover paid at 500 miles per day. I talked about that already. Now, every night spent in the truck should be compensated. My thought, minimum of $50 every night. Now, why would I say that? I just sit back there playing video games, right? Sleeping minding my damn business why do I think I should be paid for that in my little apartment back there because I am still 100% completely responsible for this truck now most nights nothing's going to happen You're gonna sit here and mind your damn business nothing at all is going to happen but you're still monitoring the situation the whole night even if you're not aware of it. You're running refrigerated like I am. You hear that reefer turn off. Oh, you've got a problem. You better get out of bed and figure out why. Did it run out of fuel? Is it broken? Now, did it break down? You got to call into maintenance and you got to get it fixed. And then you've got to break your sleep schedule to take it to a shop to go get it fixed. Not that sleep schedules exist in trucking, but you get the fucking point. And now you've got to get it fixed. And then, then you've got to figure out how you're going to make this load. Now that you've fucked up your clock and all these things, uh, some jackass hits your truck. You got to get up. You got to deal with that. You got to get all your pictures. You got to call the safety department. I've only been, I think I've only been hit once. Well, I've been hit twice in parking lots, truck stop park, three times, <laughs> three times I can think of. One time I didn't know. I got woke up late at night, felt the truck shaking. And I'm like, well, that was weird, but I was so tired. It didn't register in my brain. And they had smacked the bumper on the front of my truck. Not really bad damage, but it broke the plastic off. And I never said a word about it. Cause I was like, I, I don't know. They, they just drove away and I didn't realize when it happened that it had happened. It just confused me. Um, another time was they scraped my mirror over on that side um, and I watched the truck drive away as they did it. 
yeah, that happened. And then uh, one time uh, they really smashed up the passenger side over there. And the driver parked next to me with that whole side smashed up over there. He parked, he closed his curtains. I was inside the uh, uh, truck stop. I came out, another driver told me, because I wouldn't have even walked to the passenger side. Another driver told me, hey, this guy just hit you and he's acting like he's asleep. Well, that was like a two hour long ordeal. I had to call our safety department they said, uh, call the cops down there. Now, the cops aren't going to do much. It's private property, but they will allow you to make a police report, which your company wants. And then uh, the cop, I'm, I, I'm glad he was there because the guy that hit me uh, act, was acting like he didn't. And then um, he got pretty aggressive with me when I was like, dude, what the hell? Obviously, you hit me. We're like the only few people at this truck stop right now. And it wasn't like this five minutes ago. Like, just be honest and say you hit it. It happens, okay? But then he started to get pretty aggressive, like angry, and then the cop was there, and then the cop made him stand way the fuck over there while I walked around the truck and got all the pictures that I needed, um, and then he, um, he also picked up on the fact that that other trucker was very aggravated or agitated or aggressive, whichever A word you want, and, uh, he said, why don't you go ahead and, uh, and uh, PC on down the road to another uh, truck stop so that this guy don't mess with you tonight. Um, and you're still very much responsible for this truck even though nothing's going to happen. So minimum $50 per night to uh, stay in the truck. The company owes you on top of everything else. And you know, people say, you know, a lot of people are in favor of lower wages for everyone because you know it keeps the price of uh, goods and services low Josh so we should have low prices on everything so everybody just has to take a pay cut to me I'm not an economist that doesn't make any fucking sense like nothing's cheap right now everything's fucking expensive right so that didn't work um, but hey if we have a happy healthy workforce that is doing their part, putting in their, in most cases, 40 hours a week, in our case, up to 70 hours a week, um, and they're, they're doing their part, there shouldn't be any reason that they're not uh, able to afford things. Like, not all the things. I don't think that you got a job so you deserve a Ferrari or a Lambo or anything, you know, uh, just because you did a basic function in our society. But, uh, you know, you should be able to afford the necessities. So, um, I don't know that the whole lowering everybody's wages to make everything more affordable experiment really fucking worked out for us. I don't know. I'm not an economist. Anyways, uh, as your guys' future union representative, those are that's my platform, and it's all about pay. It's all about consistency in pay. It's all about us getting paid for everything that we actually do out here, and uh, hey, that's just the way I feel about it. I know it probably won't work. I know we probably cannot unionize because they will bust that union as quick as we fucking think about it. They'll just hire a bunch of new fucking people. That's what they do. Hey, but hopefully one day, maybe I just keep grinding it out and I start my own trucking company and I set the standards for how this industry is going to treat truckers. And then we stop turning over truckers, right? Right? Because, you know, everybody's talking about keep things cheap, keep things cheap, while they keep churning through truckers at every trucking company out there. How is that keeping things cheap? Because it costs a lot of money to put a truck driver through orientation. He needs a rental car to get there. He needs a motel. He needs two to three meals a day. Um, and he needs to sit there at that orientation for two days to five days, however long it takes, generating absolutely no money for that trucking company. It seems to me that it would be a whole lot cheaper to retain your employees than to keep bringing in new ones over and over. But maybe that's why I'm at the bottom here. Maybe that's why I just drive the damn truck because I don't know a fucking thing about business. Or maybe, maybe I'm too good of a guy to run a business because I'd be trying to pay my employees. Damn it. Talk to you guys later. Bye now.